My name is Eric DeLuca. I have been in residence here at Bemis from January 13th to April 8th. I'm not, Josh, help me out. I'm not currently based anywhere. He's a I'm a, I'm sort of a vagabond, vagabond, I guess. So basically all my work starts with uh, sound and objects that make sound. And from those two things, the work emerges into something. Hi, I'm Josh Short. I've uh, been a Bemis resident from January 13th through April 8th. Oh, I'm currently based out of San Francisco, but I'm a hobo, so I don't, I don't live there, really. I just have a mailing address there. You're listening to Bomb Shelter Radio 95.5 FM in the greater downtown Omaha area. My practice, uh, I work with sound and sculpture, um, and and radio transmissions. And there's a, there's a high level of performance involved, although I'm not a performance artist or a sculptor or a, or a sound artist. I'm kind of a little bit of all that. Since I've been a resident here at the Bemis uh, Center, I've been working on uh, developing a, the fifth incarnation of like my radio station project called Bomb Shelter Radio. I worked with the local all ages DIY sort of like punk space called Milk Run and uh, we set up a radio station there. Oftentimes I build out um, a big sculptural element. This time it kind of took the form of sort of a cross section of a, an apartment building. I made um, three things since I've been here. Uh, the first piece was, is called Howling May Occur and it's for 17 Marantz uh, tape players that used to be um, used for uh, recording emergency dispatch calls in a hospital in Virginia. The second piece is called A Heap of Dead Phones and a Slightly Changing Dial Tone, which is a piece for a, a very large heap of dead phones that I purchased for $20 from a, a school district in Denver, or outside of Denver. Uh, and then I made a, a, just a really simple program that really slightly changed a, a dial tone. The third piece that I made here is, is called For 45 Bell Ringers, and it's for 45 uh, not, bell ringers from phones from the, the 20s and 30s that were controlled by a, 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 this custom-built computer and um, really I was able to I was able to sort of musically explore these bells. Eric and I talk a lot about um, sound and music it, it, it's part of a, like the, a way that we understand how cultures work. Sound um, is, is relational in that that it's it's actually it actually physically touches people so for Josh Sound propagates through the radio and through the radio airwaves, and at the same time propagates in the space in which, in which the radio station exists, which is Bombshell Shelter Radio, which was at Milk Run. That's something that's very interesting to me, this transformative effect you know, that you can have through like, mm -hmm. claiming or reclaiming. It's like a reclamation, in a way, of like, uh, this culture that has yet to be um, sort of like put in a time capsule or mm -hmm. analyzed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, right. Josh and I's work is is situational and experiential. It's not. I wouldn't say that it's about the object. It's about the the experiences that people have in a space. I found like I'm so distracted by the the proposition of like uh, like creating experience. Um, that oftentimes I don't uh, allow myself to sort of sit in my studio and build a sculpture. Our paths, I feel like, have, have sort of crossed. Yeah. So like you come from sculpture. Yeah. I have a background in music and music composition and playing in bands. But here we're sort of like crossfading, mm -hmm. where you're getting into the sort of musical environment and I'm getting into the sculptural environment. Yeah. And 
it's just funny to hear you say that, you know, I want to sit in my, in my studio and, and get back to making sculptures. Yeah. I mean, I would say that you do that to a degree that is so profound that, like, I don't, like, if you go into Josh's studio now, <laughs> there are these little tiny sculptures and things on the wall everywhere. Yeah. So I think that you are I do making, that. whatever, yeah. Your I speaker that. cabinet sculpture, yeah. like, that thing doesn't make any sound. Yeah. But it is totally a, a, a sound art piece. As a viewer, like, that's, you know, the fun thing about, like, uh, looking at your work is that, like, oh, these, there's these telephones. And, like, I know what telephones do. We're supposed to talk on them, and you're supposed to pick them up, and it does, it's a useful thing, and you can call grandma, you know? Uh, and, and then, you know, you look at the bells, and, like, you're, you're, you know what those are, and there's this hint mm-hmm. that it does something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And so I very much, like... I always do that with my work, you know, like putting the kitchen sink in the bomb shelter, you know, people want to go over and like turn it on, you know, and like get a drink of water or something. But like then all of a sudden the expectations change when they look at it closer and they realize that, Mm -hmm. oh, I just turned like a kitchen sink into a speaker cabinet, Mm -hmm. you know, and then all of a sudden their minds get blown in a way, you know, it's like, oh, what the hell, what, that is crazy and weird. And then all of a sudden you got them. You, you've like broke down there, like through like nostalgia, through expectation, through like leading them in. You know, all of a sudden you've broken a, a wall, mm-hmm. and now their minds are open. John Cage, I, I, he said that. I mean, he said many profound things, but one thing that he said is that life is a form of theater. And when you think about life as a form of theater, or life as a music composition, or life as a situational art you are more accepting of being in a place and observing aesthetic beauty, whatever that may be. Your dial is tuned to Bomb Shelter Radio, 95.5 FM.